So, Mr. Stockfin, you edited this wonderful book, 30 Feet Below Belgium, an affair of letters in the great war about a long distance affair between uh, a young soldier, Jeffrey, fighting in Flanders, and the correspondence between him and Edith, a young teenage girl. Um, could you explain to us what is your connection to this story? Yes, um, Edith was my mother, uh, but not. I was not born until many years after this affair because uh, they were both very young. Geoffrey was um, 20, 20, uh, 21 approximately, Edith was 17 and then 18 um, while, while these letters were being uh, exchanged. Uh, and um, I found the letters. I, well, first of all, let's, let's backtrack. Um, I knew uh, from my childhood of Jeffrey's existence because um, my mother uh, had kept up uh, relations with his family, uh, but um, I had never any knowledge or uh, inkling of um, any relationship between them. Uh, but I remember when I was very small, it would have been during the Second World War, uh, going with my mother, and I would have been about five years old, maybe, uh, to Stratford-upon-Avon, where Geoffrey's mother lived. And I noticed that on the mantel shelf of the living room, there was a war office plaque uh, commemorating her son who died in the um, First World War. That was all I ever knew. Um, I, I, she never, my mother never made any hint of any relationship between her and uh, Jeffrey. So you never had any idea that they were romantically involved or? Not at all, not, no, at, all. not at all. So not you knew all. that there was this figure of Jeffrey, the son of the friend of the family who had died, but well, um, any love well, in 1990, I think I, I had to clear my parents' house because my mother had died some years before my, uh, my father had to go into a um, nursing home. I had to clear the house uh, for, in order to sell it. And um, I discovered, uh, a well, I knew that there was a chest, a wooden chest under one of the beds, and it was locked. And I didn't have the key. Uh, eventually, I found the key. I had to hunt for it because uh, it was there were keys all over the house in drawers and things. Eventually, I found it. And um, it was, when I opened the... Uh, trunk, it was uh, essentially my mother's treasure chest with all sorts of things that she had treasured uh, within it. And one of these things was this very humble biscuit box or cake box uh, of cardboard. Uh, and when I opened that and it was, uh, it was tied together with a piece of string, uh, I found these letters and I... Um, I think I read them right through on that very same day and was astonished, amazed uh, at what I found. So, so do you remember how, how did you feel when you discovered that your mother had had this kind of secret love story long before you were born, long before she even met your father uh, and that she never told anyone about? How did you feel when you discovered these uh, I was absolutely knocked bang, you know. It was it was uh, a complete revelation to me. I, I had never suspected this, and any, never known anything about it. But also, um, I realised that I had been quite blind in relation to this because, as I was clearing the house, I found many pictures of Jeffrey. I, I found. Uh, I didn't find the letters obviously until the last minute, but um, uh, there were, if I had if I had put things put two and two together, which I didn't, uh, I would have understood that something was going on. But <laughs> I, was, I was naive. I didn't uh, naive or blind or whatever. I didn't suspect this. So did you? Did you I look? A general, I think there's a generalization here that um, people don't don't really expect that sort of thing of their parents. I mean, their parents are something a bit different, you know, and, uh, and the idea that your mother's had an affair with somebody. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Did my father know? Well, I don't know that because my father, by the time he had to go into a, a nursing home, uh, was not in command of his senses, really, and I couldn't, uh, there wasn't any way I could have asked him that. I'm pretty sure he did know, but I, I can't be sure of that. So, so did, you, was it, did you start looking at your mother in a whole new light, in a whole new way? In, in a way, yes, in a way, yes. I mean, I was not born until she was, I think, 37. So I had obviously never known her as a, as a really young person. And, you know, a young girl of 17 um, and a woman of 37, uh, rather different, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and did you know that she was such a good writer? Well, I, I had seen things she had written, that is true. I mean, she, was, she, didn't, do, she didn't do writing for publication, uh, but I mean, I'd read letters from her um, in various, at various times, I suppose. And, um, you know, I knew she could string words together pretty nicely. <laughs> yeah. And it must be so weird. I'm just imagining myself now what it would be like to, I'm just imagining what it would be like to find letters of my mom when she was 17 and madly head over heels in love with a guy. It must right. be, <laughs> it must be very special, but also I would maybe also feel like someone who isn't allowed to be reading those letters at the moment. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I did. I think I did have one or two pangs, <laughs> pang conscience over reading the letters. But I mean, you know, I realized very quickly that this is, this is an amazing story. I mean, why, I don't think I need to keep it quiet, really. And um, it's also a story of universal significance. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not just something to be hidden away. I mean, I, I thought that this should perhaps be given some general um, publicity, maybe. I, it was quite a long time before the before I had the letters um, transcribed and, and published eventually. In fact, I think I found them in 1990, and it wasn't until uh, probably 2005 that they were actually published. And that was as a result of the fact that I... There was a publisher that I have happened to know. Uh, I mentioned these letters to her. And um, I mean, I, I had worked with her on completely different things. And um, she had a friend who was also in publishing, who was interested in them uh, or became interested in them. And um, so publication went, went from there eventually. And what do you think your mother would think about you publishing her intimate letters. <laughs> well, I, I do sometimes worry about that because you, uh, I mean, she was an extremely private person in my knowledge of her. And this, I think, relates to her generation. Uh, I mean, as I said before, I was born when she was 37, but she was born in 1898. So uh, that generation, I think was was very tight in terms of um, particularly family history. I mean, they, these are very sensitive things for them, certainly for her. And various things had happened later in her family history, which uh, she was very upset about. And therefore, uh, I, I think her general attitude was that um, these were not things to be uh, talked about really very much. So, you know, I, I, had she known about it, I don't know how she would have reacted, but probably not terribly well, I suspect. But I'm, I'm glad you did share them because, again, uh, I want to say that they're beautifully written. I've studied they literature are, yes. and I, I find these letters real literature. I, I think they, yeah, it's just beautiful and wonderful to read them. I, I think everyone should read them because... They are, they are, they are very good. Yeah, amazing they're very good. Story. It's an amazing yeah. story. Do you do you know how um, Jeffrey and your mother uh, met? Uh, not well. I know in very general terms, not not precisely. Um, Jeff. Well, my mother 
was from a, a medical family, and she herself became a doctor um, uh, when she was uh, in her early 20s, I suppose. She, she graduated from the University of Birmingham, where they lived. Uh, and Geoffrey uh, had, um, was from a family that was based, originally based in London, uh, but because of his father's work, he had come to the Birmingham area and um, they had met somehow um, a, as a result of, you know, being, being close together. I don't know exactly how they had met, uh, but he knew her house, knew, had, had visited her and her family uh, in her house in, in Birmingham um, some time before. I don't know how long before. Um, he had to go to, to training, military training, and then to, to the war in, uh, in Flanders. Yeah. So they had seen each other maybe three or four times before he left? Not well, he, he, uh, he calculated in, and, and wrote in one of the letters that according to his calculation, um, they had been in each other's company for a, no more than four complete days. <laughs> which is an interesting observation, I suppose. Um, but it was, a, well, it was a, a difficult uh, relationship in the sense that, uh, well, they were in, they, could, they couldn't they could meet. And, and um, there were a number of occasions where he thought he was coming on leave or he actually did come on leave, but his, his parents on one occasion, because his father was ill, had to go uh, and, and recuperate in Cornwall, which is a long way away. And he only had probably 72 hours leave, so he couldn't visit Birmingham, so he couldn't see her. And she was very upset that he hadn't been able to come and see her and so on. That was a little bit of a crisis in the relationship, I think. Uh, but uh, they came through that. He was, he was, as you said, only 21 years old when he died. Um, when you were reading the letters and his letters to your mom, um, what kind of young man do you imagine Jeffrey was? Um, that's a difficult question to answer. I mean, I, I sort of felt, having read the letters, um, that obviously there's a huge difference between me and him in terms of uh, time and, and um, background and everything else. I mean, after all this, we're talking about the First World War when all this was happening. Uh, but that's somehow I I felt that I rather I knew him I, I I sort of started to think of him as a personal friend uh which is a bit bizarre I suppose but um you know he he um he was somebody I thought I could talk with or you know and uh, would understand he might understand me I don't know yeah I, I felt like he was very open and also very funny he had a lot of humor he was, certainly very funny. <laughs> he was amusing yeah he was amusing he made he, me laugh um, a lot of time a lot of the time he made me laugh when i was yeah, both, yeah. both of them quite plainly from the letters were well educated yeah and and they you know i know from um, talking with my mother i mean she she was she uh, she wrote very well i mean she was very fond of um, english literature I mean, I still have on my shelves uh, books uh, with a signature in, uh, you know, that might be Tennyson or, or, or Blake or somebody like that. Poets and uh, novelists and so on. Yeah, yeah, you, uh, you can see that when you read the letters, you, you can see that they are written by people who have a lot of love for the language. And, That's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> they can play around with words. Yeah, and with each other because. Um, uh, in the beginning, they're kind of um, careful, and then you see the flirting developing as well. Yeah, yeah a little bit of flirting coming along, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So do you think um, that the long-distance affair she had with Jeffrey throughout the letters has had, and, and her, her affair with Jeffrey, the love affair with Jeffrey, do you think it, it had an impact on... Uh, the rest of your mother's life, on um, the choices she made later on in her life? Well, I, I guess it must have done, but uh, I mean, the extraordinary thing is to me that this must have been uh, one of or, or the uh, most important relationship of her early life, and yet she never talked about it. 
I never, heard, you know, I, I had no knowledge of it. But she, she did keep up with his family. Um, I actually met his mother when I was very small. Um, my, my mother took me down to Stratford-upon-Avon where the mother was living. Alice, her name was. Uh, and um, she was a very old lady and, and not in good health. My mother's a doctor by that stage and I think was giving her medical advice. Uh, and, um, you know, the, this was something that I knew about, but there was a whole other layer of meaning, signification in this whole relationship, which I had no idea about. Jeffrey was your mother's best kept secret. She was, he was indeed, he was indeed, yes. <laughs> so um, I would also like to mention that you allowed Talbot House in Belgium to print a new a special edition of the book um, in light of the upcoming exhibition, Cheerio Darling, the expression yes. that Jeffrey also used uh, <laughs> uh, to sign his uh, letters and people can already pre-order uh, the new edition through Talbot House. Um, Mrs. Stockwin, I, um, I could go on for hours <laughs> because it's such an interesting topic, but I want to thank you for sharing these wonderful letters with the world uh, and for your time and for this interview. So thank you very much. It was an honor to meet you and it was also okay. an honor to, meet, uh, to read these letters. Yeah. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for your interest. Thank you. And I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you.